Hey, Paul here for Retro Gaming Arts, and today we're going to be talking a lot about this uh, HDMI modded Nintendo 64. So I'm going to show gameplay footage from a composite, an RGB, and uh, the HDMI N64, so you can see the three different ones. And I'm going to talk about uh, what you need in order to RGB mod your N64 or HDMI mod, and I'm going to cover both. So let's go. So before we get to the comparison of all the three consoles, there's a few things I want to talk about, and that is all the different video signals that the Nintendo 64 outputs, um, the different mod chips you need in order to RGB mod a Nintendo 64, how to get one of these uh, RGB mod N64 kits, also how the install is, how difficult that is, we'll touch on the install, and then we'll show the comparison, and then I'll explain my thoughts about testing all of these and playing with all of them. And, give you a final analysis. So, the N64 outputs composite video and S-video regular out the box, and you can just throw composite in the trash because the purpose of all of this is to increase the quality from composite. Now, I noticed that S-video is only a slight, slight, slight improvement to composite, which typically isn't the case for such, a, let's say, Sega or Sony uh, consoles. S-Video for Sega or Sony is a huge increase. Now for Nintendo, not so much. So let's talk about RGB modding it. If you want to RGB mod your N64, there's two different types of N64s. If you look at the bottom, you'll see a serial number and it'll say either NS1 or NS2. Now if you have an NS1 console, you only need a very simple amp. You only need to just add this little amp because the NS1 N64 already has RGB in the console. Now if you have an NS2 uh, N64, which is all fantastic models, they will all be um, NS2, you actually need to add RGB back into the console with a little bit more of a complex chip. Now these chips for the NS2 will also work on the NS1, but the chips for the NS1 will not work on the NS2. So once you have the RGB into the N64, it looks so much better than composite or S-video. But now you need an RGB gaming setup, whether it be some sort of RGB uh, SCART to HDMI adapter, a PVM, and typically your whole gaming setup would have to be an RGB. So where the HDMI console comes in is it's HDMI. You just plug it in your TV. You don't need it any of this gaming setup stuff, nothing. You don't need all the extra accessories, cables, wires, all that. You just plug it into a TV that has HDMI. So convenience is key for that. But what about obtaining one of these chips? Now, that can be the most difficult aspect of all of this. How do you even get one of these chips? Um, they, they're from GameTech, uh, GameTech.us. That's where the chips come from. And it took me a very long time to get one because they're sold out, always. You, they go up for sale, they're instantly sold out, and then you gotta wait six months or longer until more come in. So if you want one, you gotta go to their website and try to buy one, and then once you buy one, you gotta install it yourself or send it to somebody else who installs it. Now, as for the install itself, I would say it's very difficult to classify this for me, but I would say it's the easiest expert level install there is. Now what I mean by that is, like if you have a lot of soldering experience, this can be a very easy mod because it's just a ribbon cable, straight to the fine pitch, solder it in, you're done. However, what I mean by expert level is there's a lot of different techniques that you need to know in order to make this easy for yourself. And I feel if you're a beginner to an intermediate, you may not have had uh, enough experience doing this in order to achieve this mod. Now, if you are beginner or intermediate, if I say, all right, so if you're intermediate skill ability bordering on going into advanced, I'm pretty sure you could do this. If you have some fine pitch soldering experience, if you don't have some fine pitch soldering experience and you want to try this mod, practice. Take a fine pitch chip off of a dead board somewhere, remove it, solder it back on. Do that a couple times, get more acquainted with fine pitch, and I feel that you could very, very easily do this uh, mod. It's not that hard, but there's a lot of techniques. It's very easy to bridge, very easy to bridge on this mod. So a lot of it is just removing your bridges, which 
can be easy if you've practiced and had a lot of experience with that and you have the techniques down. So the other option is buying a pre-modded console, but people tend to gouge on the prices. I've seen, I'm seeing them for around $500. So now that that's all out of the way, I wanna talk about the HDMI mod itself. There's a menu inside where if you hold right here, right here, right here, and then here. You press all those buttons at the same time and it brings you to an HDMI menu inside where you can tweak and customize and try to get the best picture for your personal display, which is really cool and really nifty. And you can, it's four by three or you can stretch it, whatever you want. There's all sorts of different techniques, which I'll show when we do the comparison and I show Mario 64. So speaking of the comparison, let's go right to it. So here on composite, you see how the text is kind of blurry. The colors don't really pop. When you switch to RGB, the text isn't blurry anymore. The colors are a little bit more vibrant. And then on HDMI, it's just perfected. So here we go on to composite for picking orchid. You see how nothing is like pronounced. It's a little blurry, the, nothing really pops. When you go to RGB, all that blurriness is gone. Nice crisp edges and on HDMI, it's perfected. That's a common trend, so you'll see that throughout the whole comparison. So here we have some gameplay, and on composite, no, like nothing pops. It's very, it's blurry. It's kind of, it's a little blurry. It just doesn't look crispy. And then when you switch to RGB, it's significantly much, much more crispy. Like look at the plane in the background at Orchid's level. You see how like it doesn't just blend in. It's there, and it's absolutely awesome. I, told, I, I love this game. It may not have been the best game to do the comparison of, but I just love this game so much. Killer Instinct, so sick. And when you switch to HDMI, it's just absolutely perfected uh, again. And what I like about the HDMI mod is you see how everything's a little bit more pixelated, and I, I like that. I don't like it to be like blurry and washed out. I like to see the pixels, and it's, it's awesome. It gives it a little bit more of a, a PS1 style graphic vibe for me. And then here we have a uh, composite for Mario. We all remember this, pulling Mario's nose. And you see how much more clear it gets when you switch to RGB. And it's just, again, it's just perfect on HDMI. So what, I'm gonna play this whole little scene so you can see it in order and it's just kind of gonna switch between the difference as it goes but we're gonna try to keep it in order. So it's the one scene being played through all three. And now we're gonna go back to composite. And you see how the detail is just gone. You can't notice any of the detail because it's all, it's washed out. And then as RGB comes back in, you can see a little bit more of the detail. And then HDMI, it's razor sharp edges. So here's all the menu settings. And I'm just gonna kind of blast through all of this and summarize it. You can change the resolution, you can change uh, the pixel size, you can change uh, you can change so much of that little menu. You can actually save your presets and then once you have your presets saved, you can reapply them. And I found just a little bit more than default is absolutely perfect. You don't really need to go too too into uh, the settings. I just turned it to 1080p and I, I don't really like the digital scan lines, although these ones are perfect. And then also um, the de-blur function, it, I just left it on auto, and a lot of the a lot of the settings are preset for you, and you just change your gamma, and then you also change the size. So that was a lot of information, and I tried really hard to get all of it out. So to summarize, composites worthless, S video on the N64 kind of worthless too. RGB modding is a very very viable route if you already have an RGB gaming setup. Depending on your Nintendo 64, if you have an NS1 or an NS2, it will vary the, the RGB mod that you need. The NS1 mod chips are significantly less expensive than the uh, NS2 mod chips. And I feel that if you have an RGB gaming setup, RGB might be the way to go for your Nintendo 64. If you don't, the HDMI is totally, it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. Um, unless you absolutely need the, if you have an RGB gaming setup and you need the best, then you need the HDMI because it is the best. It is, it's totally worth it, it's the best. However, I feel for me personally, I don't always need the best of everything. I just need it to be good enough for me. 
and RGB is good enough for me. So I don't need to go to that next level. Um, it's really nice, but eh, my setup, it's all RGB. I'm, I don't even have any more HDMI inputs in my setup. I can't even add another one if I wanted to. I had to unplug something to plug this in. So for me and my personal setup, I, I'm okay with RGB. However, it's, it's pretty sick and I do kind of want it, but I feel somebody else would probably want it or could benefit more from it than me. So, yeah, I mean, it's all up to you. It's all your preference, whatever. If you want to play it in composite, if that's good enough for you, play it in composite. Don't throw your composite cables away, use that. Whatever's good enough for you and whatever's good enough for your system and your setup and however much you like the console and however good you want it, that's the correct answer, and that's what you should do. And that's what you should do with everything. Whatever's good enough for you is always the correct answer. So uh, thank you guys very, very much for watching. If you have any questions about anything related to this, leave them in the comments. I'll reply to those. I got your back, don't worry. Reach out on social media, email, uh, all that kind of stuff. You need, an, you need, you got one of these kits, you got an N64, and you want, you want me to install it for you, I can do all that too, because that's what we're all about. So. Thank you guys very, very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.